Welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. Not much gets the meteorological community, particularly as semantics, as excited as an easterly in February. And that will be the dominant feature through the next 10 days. But as we shall see, not all easterlies are the same. Not much sign of an easterly high in the sky as we start this forecast period. These are the winds high up, the jet stream there, pretty active and pushing low pressure systems up between Iceland and Greenland. To the south of that, we've got high pressure sitting across the UK. What will happen over the next day or so is it all shifts further north. The jet, if anything, intensifies, pushing more lows up to the north. The high pressure also ambles across up into Scandinavia, where it kind of sets up home and is likely to live for much of next week. But we're not necessarily interested in this arm of the jet, which is, as I say, pretty active. But you'll notice that actually it does dive back further south down across the UK. We haven't got the, uh, the pink colours here, which means it's, n it's not as strong. But nevertheless, it is strong enough, this little dip in it, to maybe generate an area of low pressure down across France that will push northwards and um, mix things up a little bit as we head into the weekend. As it gradually moves northwards, this little area of low pressure, it will introduce certainly much more clouds, but also increasingly we will see some wet weather from this low, particularly across these eastern counties of England. That's all to come at the weekends. Before we get there, if we re rewind to Thursday, there's the high sitting right over us pretty much, allowing a frosty start to Thursday. But then, generally speaking, a sparkling day of sunshine for much of the country. It's going to be a fine winter's day. Yes, a little chilly early on. Could be some mist and fog early on. As that low starts to push northwards, though, the uh, yeah, winds will start to pick up across the south. And certainly the cloud will increase through Thursday, Thursday night. And then, yeah, by the time we get to Friday, quite a lot of clouds smothering England. Still plenty of bright weather further west with the winds coming in from the east. West Wales, Northern Ireland, Western Scotland. Going to do all right for sunshine sunshine over the uh, coming days. But with those winds picking up, they are likely to bring a few showers. Those showers most, mostly of rain, but there's the old fleck of white in there. We could see a few snow flurries. Temperatures, well, they're going to be low for the time of year, certainly across the south. A few degrees below average and, crucially, that wind is picking up. So quite a significant wind chill developing uh, across southern counties of England and South Wales through Friday. This is how it will feel in that wind, barely much above freezing, a little higher further north with some sunshine. The wind's a bit lighter here, not feeling too bad at all in Western Scotland and Northern Ireland. Not just the wind, but also the increasing cloud with a few showers coming in here as we go through the course of Friday, which are likely to pep up more. The low pressure edging further north, you can see the cloud and the rain spiralling around it. And look at that, a bit more in the way of wet weather coming into eastern counties by the time we get to Saturday. Again, despite the cold conditions, most of this will still be rain, but there's a little bit of white mixed in there still. So again, a little bit of snow is possible. Certainly some sleety conditions are likely further west and further north. It stays generally dry with those clear skies, hard frost likely across Scotland and Northern Ireland through the weekend. The wet weather tending to fizzle out as the low kind of breaks up as we head into Sunday. But nevertheless, quite a cold, grey, dank weekend across these eastern counties. Temperatures still only six or seven Celsius. And again, add on that wind and it will feel much closer to freezing. So yeah, it is going to be chilly, but um, are we going to see any wintry weather, any, any sleet and snow? Well, as we've seen, most of that precipitation from the low pressure is likely to be rain, but we could see some snow flurries here and there. Now, this is the uh, the freezing level, uh, basically how high up through the sky you've got to go before you get to zero Celsius. And it's an indication of where we could see some snow falling. You can see the, uh, the lowest freezing level, those gray colors, 200 meters down across parts of the southeast. That's on Friday. So when we see those odd showers coming in, we could easily see a little bit of sleet and snow mixed in. Notice the uh, freezing level way up there across northern parts of Scotland. As we go through Friday night, what we'll see is the air, the colder air spreading more widely across England and Wales, that freezing level dropping down right across England and Wales. But remember, for most places, it's still going to be dry. So 
For snow, you need two things. You need it to be cold, but you also need that uh, moisture. And for many places, it's going to be dry. And by the time we get to Saturday, when we have that rain mix coming in across these eastern areas, notice the freezing level has risen somewhat. So, yeah, it's kind of on the cusp, but uh, we suspect at this stage most of the wet weather across the east is going to be sleet, rain, maybe a little bit of snow on some higher routes, but not expecting it to cause huge amounts of disruption. Something to watch, but at this stage, we're not expecting huge amounts of snowfall as that low pressure heads north through the weekend. What about beyond that? Well, that little low kind of uh, fizzles out. And into next week, it's all about this area of high pressure building across Scandinavia. And as the high sits in here with the winds going clockwise, draws in that easterly wind. That is going to be a feature of the weather through the weekend developing and then sticking around for a good chunk of next week. Now, that easterly wind is going to bring colder conditions, but it doesn't look exceptionally cold. And there's a couple of reasons for that. If you follow the isobars, well, they actually show that the winds are going to be coming up a little bit from the south. So, yes, they're going around that area of high pressure, but they're dipping south before they come across the UK. And that is quite important. It means it will be quite so cold. That's one of the reasons. The other reason is the air over here just isn't as cold as it would normally be. Now, let me take you back to 2018, uh, the so-called beast from the east. And when we had that uh, occur late February into March, this was the pressure pattern. So remarkably similar on the face of it with high pressure sitting over Scandinavia and the isobars pointing to the east. That's where our wind was coming from. But if we zoom in a little bit, you can track the isobars and these ones are pointing a little further north. The air was coming in directly from Siberia, whereas now, if we fast forward to the current setup, those isobars too, do take that detour. So the air is, is drifting a little further south compared to what it did in 2018. So that's one reason why it won't be quite as cold. Another reason is the air uh, sitting across uh, Siberia, northern parts of uh, Poland, up across into the Baltic states, just isn't as cold. This is a, a map from NOAA showing where we've got snow and ice lying across the northern hemisphere. I'll spin it around to make it a bit more obvious. There's the UK. And you can see where we've got snow lying on the ground, yes, across Russia, but uh, head away from Russia, and there isn't much of it lying on the ground uh, across Ukraine or Poland, not, certainly not as much as we would expect at this time of year. And we can show that on this map here. This is showing the snow anomalies. Again, I'll zoom in and spin the map around so it's a little bit more obvious. There's the UK. And any red blob is where the snow is uh, less than the average you'd expect at this time of year. And you can see there across uh, Poland up towards the Baltic states and uh, even into western parts of Russia, there is less snow lying on the ground than we would expect at this time of year. So the air just isn't going to be as cold as it was back in 2018. And that slight shift in wind direction means this is not the same thing. What about beyond uh, the early part of next week? Well, we're not going to see much in the way of change, it doesn't look. This is the probability plot with the eight different main flavors of weather that we can see. The probability going up the side from 0 to 100 and the, the dates going forward along the bottom. This brighter red color, well, that is indicative of high pressure sitting over Scandinavia. And that is definitely going to be the dominant feature, the most likely weather pattern throughout next week. Every day next week, it is greater than a 50% chance. The other darker red that comes in a little bit as we go through next week, well, that is still for high pressure, but just in a slightly different position. That's with the high pressure sitting more to the north of the UK. Both would generate easterly wind. So we're pretty solid that we'll continue to see some form of easterly wind as we go through the entirety of next week. What does that mean for our weather? Well, yes, it means that we are likely to see things pretty chilly. This, as I said, is the most likely pressure pattern with the high sitting somewhere over Scandinavia, generating winds coming in from the east. And these are the temperature anomalies, the maximum temperature anomalies, so below average. But, but bear in mind, this is based on the climatological average. And as we've already seen, it's not as cold as it is usually at this time of year. So it probably won't be quite as cold as this. But this is the most likely setup with easterly winds keeping going through uh, next week. High pressure still dominant, so a lot of dry weather, but it will be on the chilly sides, particularly where we have clear skies at night. 
run through the whole of next week, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Yes, the percentage chance drops off a little bit, but still over 50% even into Thursday that this is the most likely pressure set up. Now, we can always still have high pressure here, but as we saw, we'll see at the weekend, low pressures can shift up from the south and they can generate some moisture and that could provide at times some wetter weather. But most likely with high sitting here, it's going to stay cold, but largely dry. Even as we head towards the end of the week, that other scenario with the high pressure not sitting here, but sitting to the north of the UK. Well, yes, it is uh, a likely uh, an option, 30% chance by the time we get to Thursday that we have this slightly different pressure pattern with the high not sitting across Scandinavia, but sitting to the north. Now that, if you shift it, that would generate stronger easterly winds. And yes, they would be coming from a little further north. But again, remember these darker blues are indicative of the average climate. And as we've seen, it isn't as cold as you'd expect at this time of year. So it wouldn't be quite as cold still, but in this scenario, with the high further to the north of the UK, we would see those winds coming in. So that would make it a little bit colder than the most likely scenario, which is the winds coming in from slightly further south. But uh, even into Friday, the pressure patterns don't really shift very much. Again, high pressure likely to dominate here. But again, the second most likely one, which is still quite a high chance there, uh, 25, 26%, uh, even into Friday. So. Whichever of these is the eventual winner, it's still high pressure dominating pretty close to the UK. So what does that mean for our weather? For pretty much the entirety of next week, we can expect it to be colder than average. But as we've seen, not exceptionally cold. Largely dry, but we can always see those weather systems uh, coming in. Wintry showers most likely in the east. And again, a, a subtle shift in those isobars determines how much moisture the air picks up as it comes across the North Sea, and that could generate a little bit more in the way of snow in eastern areas if it was a little bit of a longer sea track. So, yeah, things to play for, but um, pretty consistent signal that it's going to be colder than average next week. A lot of dry weather around, but still some wintry things to be thinking about just to keep us on our toes. How long will it last? Well, then it's a bit of a battle in the following week about whether the Atlantic starts to win out. And uh, Aidan talked much more about that in this week's Deep Dive. You can check that out. And also where the high pressure across Scandinavia is coming from and linking it to uh, a deep area of low pressure in Hawaii. So yeah, lots more in Aidan's Deep Dive from yesterday. Go and check that out and make sure you subscribe to all of our social media channels.